is my privilege and pleasure to have Teddy Kegstad come on. He's the author of the uh, Tiger Forex Report, the brilliant author of the, the report. And I like to say, Teddy, I think that we're real close to either breaking support levels or continuation patterns in the currencies. I'd love to hear your opinions. Hi. Good morning, Basil. Uh, great to see you this morning. Uh, yeah, the currencies right now and the, uh, the people who are definitely uh, following the Tiger Forex report must be really happy with the uh, levels that we've hit over the past uh, day or so and especially great. where we're at. And we've definitely are on a pinnacle point right now as far as whether the trend is going to accelerate or are we going to possibly get a correction. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. We can I can walk you through from the dollar index through a bunch of currencies or if there's something you want to highlight. Um, first, oh, well, I, well, you just let me know. Could we, could we start off with the, with the dollar index since it's really very important? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let me put this uh, I'll pull up the Dixie. I got it. All right. So yesterday. Um, we hit our upside target number one around 105.93. We spiked above it. We settled above it. And now we're trading below it. Um, the way that if we were to settle right now, let's say that now it was 3.15 and the stock market closes and we were done for the day. If the markets were to settle where they're at right now, that would have us pr pretty much set up for at least, I would say, a, a short-term correction of three to five days. Um, as far as economic numbers that we need to worry about, we really don't have much until we have tomorrow. We have the uh, existing home sales and obviously jobless claims. Um, if jobless claims trend lower, um, which obviously unemployment has been trending lower, which is something the Fed does not want to have, um, and existing home sales too, that's a number that probably may give a little bit of a shake up to the market. Now, I, I can't. I'm not going to say which way that number is going to go. Or that I, I don't have any foresight or on that. But if it does shake up the bonds and the ten-year, um, that would solidify a correction potentially for the U.S. dollar. Meaning that if the numbers come out, you know, we've been trending uh, in an inflationary way. If the numbers come out at least not inflationary or helping to uh, fuel the current trend in interest rates, which is higher yields, um, and we get a, a short-term bounce, which is very potential to happen, or at least for a few sessions, that would probably mean that we'll have a pullback in the dollar index, which means the euro, the pound, and many other currencies will have a short term. I'm not saying that they're going to trend and reverse against the dollar right now, but I think that there's a good chance we could have a bounce. And if you want me to give you some levels with certain currencies, we can totally hit it, uh, go over I those because I'm really happy with the levels that we've hit um, over the past session or two. Okay, fire away. Let's, let's go there. Okay. All right. So we talked about the dollar index and you know that, like I said, is if we were to close right now for the session, I would say right now that that would mean that we would indicate that we would have a pullback. So let's look at the uh, um, the, the bonds are also, like I said, a reflection of that. So we'll look at the euro US dollar, which is the major component of the dollar index. Now, the dollar index, like I said, is showing that potential signal. The euro, without a doubt, if it was to close right now, where it's at right now, I think you would have follow through for the next three to five sessions. Do you think it could hit 107? Market. I'm sorry? Could it hit 107? Absolutely, because <clears throat> we fell through. 107.13 was the bottom of the critical support band that we had in the Tiger Forex report. We fell through that on Friday. Now we've been trending. We traded a little bit lower. We made a lower move low over the past two sessions. Today we didn't make a lower move low. We are actually almost taking out the high. We're just below the high of yesterday. So right. yesterday, the way we, we only settled a little bit lower than the open, it almost like a doji bottom. And now with today, you have a bullish engulfing line forming off of yesterday's doji bottom. If we were to, like I said, once again, if we were to settle right now on the day, it would indicate that the U.S. dollar should be in retreat for at least three to five sessions, especially because with the euro making a move like today, and especially if it closes or takes out the high of yesterday, I mean, that's a, that's a key reversal 
um, shift in momentum. Now, does that mean the trend is going to change? Absolutely not. I'm not trying to call a bottom in the market. We're just made a lower move low. I'm just saying that we're looking to have a swing high up or swing up to a lower move high at the very least. Okay, so that's for the euro. Now let's get to the pound, which is another big one in the. Uh, dollar index. So we have the pound, which also came into our downside correction zone yesterday. It has the same thing. It's forming a bullish engulfing line as well. If it does that, that also is another indicator. So you have your two key components of the uh, dollar index that are going to give you signals. Like I said, I'm not going to say I don't know how the market's going to close. If five, six hours from now, we could be making new lows on the day. You know, But if we were to close right now, once again, that is confirming the same thing. It's, it's really significant thing is the U.S. dollar CHF, which I've talked to Tommy about over the past couple of weeks, how it's been trending higher, where the other currencies like the euro and the pound have been chopping. They've been grinding lows and what have you, but they haven't been trending like, like, like as fiercely as the dollar um, Swiss has. The dollar Swiss capped out a couple of days ago and yet and uh, on Monday it finally touched our extended upside target and it's been plateauing like it's really buffering up a ceiling and now these other currencies are swinging off of these lows or highs you know depending on the relationship with the dollar and the Swiss is just going like this sideways so that tells me that we, we are in definitely in a good we have a good chance of having a correction once again for the US dollar versus most currencies are you uh, going to have you'd, a severe be, correction? you'd be talking like a breather in other words, uh, just a kind of a relief from the move to, 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 to regain strength. Is that really what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. absolutely. Yeah, I see that as well. Okay, good. Yeah, especially because if you look at the 30-year and the 10-year, the, the we're coming off the lows and we're making a nice for, um, correction now set up for today. But the re you got to look at the pricing. We're trading at levels we haven't seen since November of last year. We're almost yes. near the lows which means the high in yields, you know? I mean, people were looking for the, for the, short, for the cuts. They're not coming anytime soon. I couldn't fact, believe how many people were saying that, oh no, rates are coming down, rates are coming down. Well, it doesn't look like it. Well, it hadn't up until today. And today uh, you've got a little bit of a pullback in the TBT. Uh, right. So I can see a pullback from TBT 37.33 to test maybe the 36.80s, uh, maybe 36.50. Mm -hmm. But if it breaks under that, then maybe it'll last a little longer. Right, right. And and, and that's why, you know, I, I, like I've been talking to Tommy about how we have to look at the, the fundamentals that are going on right now. You know, I mean, are we going to sustain, is the trend sustainable with where things are going right now? Probably not. But I, I think it's what we're doing is we've, we're establishing, we've already established the ceiling. We know where the, the floor is. Maybe, you know, now if, if the t talks about um, raising rates actually start to come up back on the table, obviously we're going to take out the lows of last year. You know, yields are going to go much higher, you know, and that is very possible. If unemployment stays low, inflation keeps going up, which, I mean, <laughs> oil with where it's at right now, I mean, come on now. If oil start gets up, stays, if it stays where it's at right now for the next three to four months, it, you can't tell me inflation is not going to be rolling uh, the numbers, you know. Teddy, we got a break. I don't know if you have time. Do you have time for just one more segment before we get, and as we go Absolutely. into the close? I'd like to, I'd like to just today is... Teddy gets that, and uh, we're looking at Teddy. I just had a question for you. One of the reasons why I want you to keep you over the break is you mentioned the tenure, the TNX. The way I've got the TNX at this particular point, I'm looking at tremendous strength in the technicals. I don't want to go through the technicals. I use the 9 and 14 period moving average, I use the MACD, the relative strength index, the stochastic at 89%. But w what do you see? I mean, in the short term and the medium term in the tenure? Uh, in the 10-year, actually, it's a great question. Uh, right now, because I've been watching the spreads, especially the two- and the five-year notes, you know, I mean, when it comes to the trending in yields, the, the long-term obviously drives the, the trend in the long-term. But the short-term yeah. is what drives things in the short run. And that's where you have to, when you see the spreads, how they move, and the thing that's really, I've noticed, especially between the 10-year, the five-year, and the two-year, is that they're, they're leading they're leading the charge, you know. And, and I think that as the 30-year continues to follow with them that you're going to see especially like the tenure lead that charge you know and that's and, and especially 
with all the refinancing that needs to be done. And, and that's the thing that I think people don't look at when they look at yields. They look at just like, oh, there's a 30 year, there's a 10 year, there's a five year, there's a two year. They don't look at the dynamics of what those individual note structures and right. bond structures mean and mechanically. You know, um, the reality is, is that when rates were much lower, our banks and our Federal Reserve financed a lot of stuff with short term interest rates. That's a big problem. Instead of having long-term debt, you're, no matter what, you have debt. You have a certain debt level for any company or business or, or definitely our government, obviously, because we have a national debt. You want to finance that at low rates. Why would you have funded our government and also the banks? Why would they fund and hedge themselves with short-term rates, especially when they knew rates were going up with the Federal Reserve that said, we're raising rates? You know, so, Now we've come into what? this conundrum. The short-term is leading that charge because they know of all the refinancing that has to be gone, done. Where so, are you going to get to Jenny, liquidity? Can I just ask you, I know we're running out of time, and I know that you've got this wealth of information. What is the level on the T on the on the TNX, the ten-year trading at forty-six point two eight right now? What's the level that you think it will go even lower, so that yields will go higher uh, off the top of your I, I head? I think I think you have every bit of two to four handle basis points down that you can go, depending on the economic numbers. So I would say every.